We got a spinny boy out there doing some crazy stuff. Is he on Meridian? Uh, I picked the perfect time to do my intro. Okay. That guy's been doing this for like hours. How has he not gotten caught yet? That's a different car. Yeah, it does backfire a lot more than the last one. Like we got guys just having a drift competition out here, I guess. So. Are you doing your intro? Yeah. The other one sounded like a V8. It did, yeah. That sounds, I don't know what that sounds like. Sounds interesting. All right, what's up friends? In the last video, you remember I failed terribly at doing fuel lines on the car because we did not have the right stuff on hand to be able to get the fuel lines done. So in this one, I ordered some parts. <laughs> <Are> you... <laughs> Do you know sign language? It looks like you know sign language. So instead of getting the Vibrant Lines, I wound up getting a kit from Evil Energy. I'll link that below. It's actually uh, pretty affordable and it comes with basically everything you would need to be able to make your own fuel line kit. So I do want to show you what I got in that kit. So let me take you over there and I'll show you what it contains. All right, now that I got everything fixed, you get 20 feet of Dash 6 line. You get two 45s, two 90s, and two 180s. You also get four of the straights and you get two different couplers if you're trying to make the lines look a little cleaner. Just going over our plan of attack here, the best way when you're looking at making fuel lines for a car is to figure out obvious routing on where the hell it's going to go. Uh, so I'm going to do two fittings that run off the feed and the return. Uh, I wanna keep those together so I can run them underneath here um, along with probably the ground wire uh, just underneath there. Then from here, I'm going to tee it off. It'll go underneath the manifold and come out. So I'm gonna have one line for the feed. It's gonna come out here and then be a 180. That's going to go off the side there. And then underneath the manifold again to this side and 180 to the front of this rail. Off the back, I'm gonna do 90s. They're gonna come up this way and they're gonna be able to go just straight to the two sides of this. And the second line that's going to run off the lower return line is going to go under with that feed, but it's going to come up to the bottom of the regulator there. So I thought this spot for the regulator was pretty good. Uh, it's centralized, it makes everything easy, and it looks pretty good from just engine bay wise. When you get a fitting, you're going to have the inner fitting. It's normally going to have some type of threading on it because it's got to go to the outside and it'll have this outer piece. The outer piece you're going to put over the hose first. And depending on what kind you have, a lot of times they have reverse threads on the inside here. So you're going to thread this on as if you're loosening it and it's going to thread onto the end right here. And that's just going to be by loosening it, it'll tighten that on. That way when you tighten the other piece on, it doesn't pull this back off. So I'll show you how to go about that. We'll shorten this. Uh, I'm just gonna use a hacksaw for it, even though we could use the bandsaw in back. A lot of people don't have bandsaws in their garage. People Venmo you $5 if you get a clean ass cut. A lot of people just have a hacksaw, man. I'm gonna use the most basic tools. <laughs> and we're gonna, we're gonna call this making fuel lines with primitive tech. This is a legit bet for, the, for your video right now. You do it, I'll Venmo you five bucks. I get five bucks for doing that's a clean awesome. cut? That's a cut, if you need a clean cut, Fantastic. I'm up for that. Yeah, so we're gonna use a hacksaw because a lot of you guys probably have a hacksaw over a bandsaw. So we're gonna at least do this one just the uh, primitive basic way. And then I'll show you putting this fitting on. So we're gonna be using these soft jaws. They're for specifically doing things like this. And where'd you get these, Tanner? Amazon. Yeah, so link them below. you can get these off Amazon. So I'll link these in the description as well because they really help out. I just wrapped electrical tape around this like a whole lot of times. Don't know exactly how many, but a whole lot. Here goes nothing. <laughs> you got five bucks? Is that clean? You got five fucking dollars? Dinner got five bucks for me or you what? Pull that fucking clean? 
How the fuck is that not clean? Bro, look at that. There, cool. the five dollars has been set. <laughs> Did I'm you not? <laughs> Did you really send me five bucks? Yeah, it's sending right now. Fuck yeah, dude. Now lube this bad boy. That way it has no issue because it's going to feed all the way in there. Sit that up there for now. This fitting, like I was trying to show earlier, it's got reverse threads. Some of these don't even have threads. They have like barbs if you get cheaper stuff. But I know all of Evil Energies have this reverse thread on it, which makes it really nice to uh, screw onto the hose. And all of Vibrance do as well. As you're screwing it on there, you're gonna see it come up right to the tip, tip, tippity tip. It'll get pretty tight. So I can see it all the way up against that flush part. You got this guy all lubed up. This is going to thread in normal. And one thing you wanna watch, you can always put tape at the back of this. That's what they recommend doing. You just wanna make sure as you're screwing this into the assembly, that this is not backing out. Otherwise you're gonna have leaks and it's gonna be a bad day. So this is going to tee off from the feed line. It's gonna run down and then it is going to split to go to the front of both rails for our feeds. That's gonna leave enough room to go underneath the manifold, snake up through here around there to this side and it'll 180 onto the front of this. The other side is going to come around this way, do the same thing, run out there and 180 to the front of that rail. So now I just have to find out length of lines, which to do that, I'm going to just use some silicone hose. It's gonna be bendy enough uh, to be able to get a pretty good idea of how long I want those lines to be. So now I have the hose all laid out. I just took the silicone line, made different marks on it to get the different lengths correct. And then I put a line where I'm going to cut along each one of these. So it goes all the way down. So that is all we're gonna use right here. It's really not a whole lot. Um, and then I've got laid out to be able to remember how each one of these is gonna go. So the two lines are going to go 180 off each one of the fronts of the fuel rails. And then for the back sides, it's gonna be two 90s to be able to go into the regulator. And that return line off the bottom of the regulator is gonna be a 45 coming out, and then a 45 up to the actual line into the car. So at this point, we just gotta cut the lines and put the fittings on. And we should be good to install this kit. Good job, dude. Good job. <laughs> Crazy boy. Uh, so I messed up. Um, I did not shoot. I thought I time-lapsed the part of putting all the fittings in and assembling the lines, but I totally didn't. So it went the same way as the first line that we made, but obviously with other lines. So just want to take you over and show you what we did. I've got these all laid out at this point where they're supposed to go, that way I won't forget. I had them all labeled. I just wrote little like, uh, like driver's front, driver's rear, return line. So I've got the dual 45 off that, that's gonna follow the other line underneath. Uh, for the front, I have the 180 that's gonna go underneath the manifold to a straight. It's gonna connect to the V. The other sides are the exact same as these, uh, just different lengths to be able to connect that properly. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and put them on and hope everything lines up correctly.
All right, so we got everything ran the way I want it. It all looks, uh, in my opinion, pretty good. So, I mean, I, I would have loved to have tucked these down, but with how this comes out back here, I didn't want to put anything else lower uh, to possibly get in the way of that pipe coming up. Uh, but we have this coming off. Everything's like ran parallel, looking good. I got them both, uh, the feed and the return coming off here. They tie in with these little clips to just keep them kind of tucked up nice. And then that feeds underneath out to this side and wraps around there. I made sure that we wouldn't have any clearance issues with that. And then on the other side as well, just feeding from there in here underneath the uh, throttle body. So looks good. I've got uh, this line for the EVAP ran too. So our EVAP system is completely hooked up. So Tanner's going to turn it over a couple of times. We're just going to check to see if we have any problems as we prime this and hopefully it's all good. That should be a You have a fuel pressure gauge on there, right? Yeah. I mean, it's holding at 50. Nice. Is that one off, Chewy? Yeah. I'm not seeing any leaks. The problem with these lines is they're so fucking hard to check. <laughs> uh, oh, I see it. Where? I think it's off the, it's off the damper off the damper on this one. Oh god. You see it. Right on top of the damper. That's why we do checks. That's fucking annoying. That's an annoying Can one you, too. Let me see it. Uh, this one too. The damper? Both of them. Oh my god. Did you replace the O-rings on the ORBs? Yeah. Dude, that looks like it's from the actual damper assembly. Okay, well that's gonna suck. Everything as far as uh, anything I did right now looks really good, but my dampers are leaking. That's gonna suck! <laughs> I gotta take the fucking lines off? Oh my god. Oh my god. No. Uh, no. All right, boys and girls, more time has passed. So I got everything cleaned up. We retested, I'll do a quick test just to uh, make sure it holds pressure. But I also went through and did a lot of random stuff that was bugging the hell out of me. Don't mind that hammer there. I wasn't actually hitting anything with it. I was just using it as a you know way to take out rage and stuff. Um, but I removed this, I rerouted some lines because I hated how many lines were going through right here. The factory system really doesn't leave you a lot of room to not have just hoses and wires and stuff everywhere. So I think I've got it where I like it right now. It's a good mix of kind of decent looks as well as efficiency. So I'm happy with that. Uh, so we're going to retest, just make sure we don't have any other leaks. I took off both fuel rails and tightened the pulse dampers. I also put belts in an alternator on this while I was sitting there kind of pondering what to do off camera. So this thing is almost ready to go, but let's do one more test and then we should be good to go. Okay. Uh, solid. 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 You're good? You're leaking off the damper, I can see it. What? Open. Oh Where my am I? God, why the fuck would you say that? No leak. No leak. No leak. No leak. No leak. 50? 50. Sweet! You guys want to see Phoenix? Of course they do. Come look at Phoenix. We never have Phoenix outside. What's up, Wakey butt? Hi, bud. Good boy. Good boy. So I'm pretty happy with how everything came out. I think that's about all we've got in this one. Uh, I do want you guys' input because uh, like I'd said in the post that I released, we did have to say goodbye to Draper recently uh, and it's been pretty tough. So he's kind of been our dude that's been here helping out in all the videos. He helped me do breaks in that one video. We, we've tried to show him a lot. So he really helped us out. Me and Tanner, 
Draper was a, a big part of everything we did, so it was a really hard decision we had to make on that. There was just no no getting better as, as far as everything happened. I, I tried, I spent thousands of dollars trying to help him, and out of nowhere, he randomly came down with something called IVDD, uh, and for the week before we had to say goodbye to him, um, I was basically carrying him down the stairs, helping him walk because his back legs weren't working and, and a bunch of stuff. So uh, they gave him a shot and when the shot wore off, it was like instantaneous pain. So it was really hard. Um, we're trying to incorporate Phoenix a little more to you know, keep, keep him in the mix and, and keep him happy uh, as far as everything going on right now. But I need some insight from you guys because we do want to do some merch for the derps. So if, if you want to help out with that, uh, give us some ideas and, and different things, sayings we can put on there. Obviously, we called him Waggy Butt. Uh, just a lot of derpy little energy going on there. So uh, we could really use the support, and I, I appreciate all the support you guys have given us thus far. We should be able to have this thing running here soon. I think we've only got like two things left on it uh, before it runs. So see you guys in the next one. You have a good one. Hi. <laughs> you like your toy? Can you help Dad take off brakes? I gotta... I gotta loosen stuff. Can I hit this with a mallet? Can you grab me the mallet? This is my dog Draper. He has like basically no teeth. I don't know if you've met him before. Derps! What's up, bud? What's up, waggy butt? Waggy butt! Waggy butt! No, go slow, go slow, slow. <laughs> Why do you always try and scare me? Trip, you wanna go get coffee? You wanna go get coffee? Okay, you ready? You have your stuff on? Go get your stuff on, come on. Come on, let's go, let's go get your stuff on. No, you don't have your stuff on, come on. Oh, you are just excited. You wanna get coffee? You wanna get coffee? Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. What are you driving the car? You need the keys? Here. Here. <laughs> Good boy. <laughs> This is my dog, Gerber. <laughs> he is a good boy. I love you. I love you. You love me? Oh, buddy. Hi. You're a good boy. He's a good boy. <laughs>